into uh, almost unlimited uh, visibility, perfectly clear water. That kind of visibility in a spring that big is also cool because it's you know, deep, it's difficult. And the people that had explored before us didn't go very far. Chips Hole has been a, a question mark for a very, very long time. The Chips connection is a hell of a lot more elusive. There wasn't a whole lot of exploration downstream in Turner until just a few years before we connected it to Wakulla. Chips has been going on for a really long time, so connecting that would be a big deal to the WKPP. So I proceeded down, I went down that slope where we left off the last time, um, called the avalanche restriction. I couldn't be anywhere near that, I had no business there. I don't want to knock a rock down, I don't want to want to sell, so I basically held quite a ways back. And then all of a sudden we hit a black wall of tannic water. You had these two email lists that were quite popular. One was called Tech Diver, one was called Cavers. They were email lists. But I would say the internet, by and large, allowed people to see video and read first-hand accounts and, of course, argue about the best way to do things. Yeah, that was a big problem. The, um, you know, these people, these training agencies and dive instructors were teaching people all the wrong things. George would give no quarter on subjects like that. So, uh, so you know, we strongly advocated mixed gas diving at, 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 any, at any depth that, that had a narcotic effect potentially. Yeah, I mean, when you're, you know, you're taught something one way, it's hard to change. Especially when it's, you know, you know from a, a training agency. But, you know, some of these guys were out of their damn minds for the things they were teaching people. They were just dead wrong. That was something that uh, Clay uh, had no patience for. And he was exactly right. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you're going to become a precision race car driver drunk. Uh, there's no practice in the world that will allow you to do that. None of the uh, staff in the Florida Park Service were cave divers, and we knew absolutely nothing about what was underground. But it's kind of hard to manage something you can't see. The public doesn't know where the water in the spring comes from and that it's vulnerable to pollution or uh, over pumping or drying up. The groundwater that is in this massive karst aquifer is highly vulnerable to the things humans do at the land surface. 20 foot stop, I wrote a note to George, I wonder how much line they laid. So he goes back down, they're not here and I, I just took off. And the line just appeared to disappear into rock. He came back out, he goes, I found Parker's tanks on the ceiling. And his light on, and no Parker. From what I understand, you know, just him and Bill being in it right to the end. You analyze the root cause of it, learn from it and don't make the same mistake. We looked at every diving accident, you know, what can we learn? And we learned from that too. At some point I began to realize that I was an outlier and that the organizations were not really interested in change. So GUE started because we said, hey, we want to be able to build explorers from the ground up of a lot of the work that we did in the WKPP. So all those early procedural components, all the early standards, all the team-based approach, all of that was really just born right into and brought and developed into the GUE organization. It's hanging out there. I mean, they're so close. Um, I don't know if they can be connected or not. I mean, we're gonna find out. The connection of the chip's hole is probably the second highest priority we have at the moment next to connecting the Wakala Leon Sinks Cave System to the Gulf of Mexico. It's a big deal.